Good morning, everyone. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2022 to one individual and two organizations. The Peace Prize laureates represent civil society in their home countries. They have for many years promoted the right to criticize power and protect the fundamental rights of citizens. They have made an outstanding effort to document war crimes, human rights abuses, and the abuse of power. Together, they demonstrate the significance of civil society for peace and democracy. This year's Peace Prize is awarded to human rights advocate Alice Bialyatsky from Belarus, the Russian human rights organization Memorial, and the Ukrainian human rights organization Center for Civil Liberties. Alice Bialyatsky was one of the initiators of the democracy movement that emerged in Belarus in the mid-1980s. He has devoted his life to promoting democracy and peaceful development in his home country. He founded the organization Vyasna, meaning spring, in 1996 in response to the controversial constitutional amendments that gave the president dictatorial powers and triggered widespread demonstrations. Vyasna provided support for the Jain demonstrators and their families. In the years that followed, Vyasna in evolved into a broad-based human rights organization that documented and protested against the authorities' use of torture against political prisoners. Government authorities have repeatedly sought to silence Alice Bialyatsky. He was imprisoned from 2011 to 2014. Following large-scale demonstrations against the regime in 2020, he was again arrested. He is still detained without trial. Despite tremendous personal hardship, Mr. Bialyatsky has not yielded one inch in his fight for human rights and democracy in Belarus. The Human Rights Organization Memorial was established in 1987 by human rights activists in the former Soviet Union who wanted to ensure that the victims of the communist regime's oppression would never be forgotten. Nobel Peace Prize laureate Andrei Sakharov and human rights activist Svetlana Ganushkina were among the founders. Memorial is based on the notion that confronting past crimes is essential in preventing new ones. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Memorial grew to become the largest human rights organization in Russia. In addition to establishing a center of documentation on the victims of the Stalinist era, Memorial compiled and systematized information on political oppression and human rights violations in Russia. Memorial became 
the most authoritative source of information on political prisoners in Russian detention facilities. The organization has also been standing at the forefront of efforts to combat militarism and promote human rights and government based on rule of law. When civil society must give way to autocracy and dictatorship, peace is often the next victim. During the Chechen wars, Memorial gathered and verified information on abuses and war crimes perpetrated on the civilian population by Russian and pro-Russian forces. In 2009, the head of Memorial's branch in Chechnya, Natalia Estemirova, was killed because of this work. Civil society actors in Russia have been subjected to threats, imprisonment, disappearances and murder for many years. As part of the government's harassment of Memorial, the organization was stamped early on as a foreign agent. In December 2021, the authorities decided that Memorial was to be forcibly liquidated and the documentation center was to be closed permanently. The closure became effective in the following months, but the people behind Memorial refused to shut down. In a comment, Chairman of the Board Jan Rashinsky stated, nobody plans to give up. The Center for Civil Liberties was founded in Kiev in 2007 for the purpose of advancing human rights and democracy in Ukraine. The center has taken a stand to strengthen Ukrainian civil society and pressure the authorities to make Ukraine a full-fledged democracy. To develop Ukraine into a state governed by rule of law, Center for Civil Liberties has actively advocated that Ukraine become affiliated with the International Criminal Court. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Center for Civil Liberties has engaged in efforts to identify and document Russian war crimes against the Ukrainian civilian population. In collaboration with international partners, the center is playing a pioneering role um, with a view to holding the guilty parties accountable for their crimes. By awarding the Nobel Peace Prize for 2022 to Alice Bialyatsky, Memorial and the Center for Civil Liberties, the Norwegian Nobel Committee wishes to honor three outstanding champions of human rights, democracy, and peaceful coexistence in the neighbor countries, Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine. Through their consistent efforts in favor of human values, anti-militarism, and principles of law, this year's laureates have revitalized and honored Alfred Nobel's vision of peace and fraternity between nations, a vision most needed in the world today. Thank you very much.
With oppressive regimes in Russia, in Belarus, with a war going on in Ukraine. It is never easy to reach a conclusion on who should receive the Nobel Peace Prize, I can assure you that. But um, we do believe that in these very challenging times, it was the time to um, address exactly what you imply in your question, that we are in the midst of a war. Uh, we are talking about two authoritarian regime and one nation fighting a war. And we would like to highlight the importance of civil society, of every citizen who has a responsibility and an engagement to promote other values than um, the values of aggression and war. Uh, Madam Chair, um, one of the laureates, Alice Bialatsky, is today imprisoned uh, in Belarus. What is your message to the authorities in Belarus considering his uh, situation? Our message is an urge to the authorities in Belarus to release Mr. Bialyatsky, and we do hope this will happen and that he can come to Oslo and receive the honor bestowed upon him. Um, but there are thousands of political uh, prisoners in Belarus, and I am afraid that perhaps my wish is not very realistic, but I do urge for his release. Do you think that uh, these prices could have a positive impact on the development in these countries? We are trying to honor and highlight all the women and men who take responsibility on the platform that they are citizens. And I think such movements might have an effect on uh, political development and development of war. Um, if such movements become strong enough, uh, they do make a difference. Uh, with the war raging in Europe, uh, how challenging was the process in finding the right laureates this year? Every year there are wars going on when we are deciding on who to reward and honour for peace, unfortunately. This year uh, we were in a situation with a war in Europe, which is most unusual, but also facing a war that has a global effect on people all over the world. I am referring to the threats of using nuclear weapons, food, shortage, food shortages, and uh, food that is not provided to um, countries also with poor populations. So that is a very bleak background. Um, and there is no sight of peace uh, in the immediate future. So what we would like to honour by this year's prize is the importance of the values that these three laureates represent and also underscoring the importance of these, uh, the three nations they represent are neighbours and that they, uh, their civil societies um, have a, a joint understanding of the values that they want to promote. Civil society can always balance um, any people in power, whether it is uh, dictatorial powers or in a democracy. 
Um, <coughs> Madam uh, uh, Reis Andersen, uh, today uh, Russia's President Vladimir Putin marks his 70th birthday. Uh, to what extent does the committee find this as a timely birthday present to President Putin? And uh, to what extent do you regard this prize as a political protest against uh, autocrats and repressive leaders? Um, this prize is not addressing uh, President Putin not for his birthday or in any other sense, except that his government, as the government in Belarus, is representing an authoritarian government that is suppressing um, human rights activists. And the attention that Mr. Putin has drawn on himself that is relevant in this context is the way uh, civil society and human rights advocates are being suppressed. And that is what we would like to address with this prize. And we always give a prize for something and to somebody and not against anyone. To what extent, uh, excuse me, to what extent do you think that this price uh, will actually increase the risk for repression and suppression of, for instance, memorial and, and cause harm to the activists? This is a dilemma that the Nobel Committee often faces and it is something we always consider and take into consideration very seriously. <coughs> But we also have the point of view that the individuals behind these organizations, they have chosen to take a risk and pay a high price uh, and show courage uh, to fight for what they believe in. We are, of course, particularly concerned about Mr. Bialyatsky who is detained under very hard conditions in a prison in Kiev, and we do pray that this price will not affect him negatively, but we hope it might boost his morale. Do you expect any starch reactions from the Kremlin? I, uh, the peace prize always gets worldwide attention and reactions and I, we are advocates of free speech and we uh, are looking forward to whatever comments that may come. Då är er presskonferensen över här i Nobelinstitutet och vi ska få ett intervju med kommitténs ledare Berit Reis Andersson på rappen här gratulerar med